Hi, I'm John Carroll. I'm the editor of Fierce Biotech. I'm joined here with Annalisa Jenkins, who is the brand new CEO of Dimension Therapeutics. Um, Dimension's a gene therapy company, and obviously you've got a long background in research and development with Merck Serono, Merck KGAA, as well as Bristol Myers Squibb for quite a number of years. I was kind of curious, I mean obviously it's a big change for you, right, in terms yes. of the company environment and everything else. Must be a dramatic, radical change from everything you're used to in the past. Tell me about, tell me about the transition, how's it going? Well, on day one of the transition, <laughs> I would say that everything is uh, certainly very different. Um, like a breath of fresh air. I would say that, you know, I spent 18 years privileged to work in large pharma at a great time at Bristol Myers Squibb. And also, you know, very different Legendary experience. Legendary time yeah, at Bristol Myers Squibb. Yeah, wonderful right. time, you know, producing uh, a pipeline of, right. of innovation under some very important mm -hmm. leaders, such as Elliot Siegel. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously the experience at Merck KGA. But I felt that it was time to really uh, develop my professional experience in a different part of the system. And as you know, um, there has been a complete evolution of the system in the last, uh, I would say, five to ten years, particularly accelerating in the last five years. And you're seeing more and more uh, professionals like myself who are really interested in moving into a space of high-tech innovation, great science, and doing that in a far more entrepreneurial, small company environment. So I, for me personally, for m it's just a natural progression on my professional journey. It's something I've not done before. Lots of new things to learn. What do you, what do you anticipate the most? What do you hope for the most? What, what is the biggest change you'd like to see from what you've experienced in the past and, and to where you are right now? Is this a question of being able to make decisions faster? Or is this a question of, of, of working with a, a small team here and, and moving on different programs yeah, or focus? Yeah, there's two focus? aspects to that question. One is what do I think I can contribute? Uh -huh. And the other one is what am I going to learn? Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of the contribution and sort of experiences that I hope to have, have. Uh, yeah, clearly working in a small company environment where this morning we got everyone together to announce this, this great recognition for the company. We were able to do that in five minutes. We had a rah-rah and tonight we're going to celebrate with pizza and beer. Mm -hmm. Well that is really fundamentally different from the environment I've worked in in the last, and, and you know that may see, seem simple. No pizza in Darmstadt. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of great food <laughs> and no pizza. <laughs> um, so you know I think that the opportunity to, for me to get closer to the science every day, mm. to have my hands on that, really exciting. Mm. To be working in an environment where you have a sense of urgency about taking that science and translating it into medicines for patients mm -hmm. and having that really clearly in focus every mm -hmm. day. I think that is sometimes challenging in the big company environment. The ability to, to know everybody and to bring together a great team and individually select people, I think that's just going to be really good fun. The other thing is the opportunity to live and work in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. So I've always felt that this is a vibrant, amazing hub uh, if you love biopharma and life sciences, so that's going to be great. The part of that I'm looking forward to personally from a professional point of view is learning how to be a CEO. So the, the whole aspect of the financial you know, growth and investment and how to create long-term value for the owners is something that in R&D I think that increasingly we've been exposed to, but actually to be fully accountable of that and learning about that from not only the board and investors but also in this environment I think is pretty special. Well, it's a brand new company, right? Yes, With a very, very old technology, yes, right? Yes. I mean because gene therapy has been around for years and years and years. Yeah. Several gene therapy companies in this year's list of Fierce 15 companies yes. um, and it's really interesting a lot of you a lot of the a lot of the gene therapy companies have the same kind of delivery vectors that uh, uh, came out of some of the research that James Wilson did yep. at Penn some years ago um, it's been changed a lot what change what do you think was the key change about gene therapy technology that has allowed this wave of companies to come along with not I mean, you're not looking out 10, 20 years down the road, are you? I mean, you're looking at a fairly, making a, a change and making a uh, making an impact in a pretty short period of time. Yeah, absolutely, which is one of the reasons that attracted to me to this space, of course. Uh, the science obviously has evolved over the lifetime of a number of, of really distinguished scientists, and obviously Jim being one of the leading lights in this. And it's remarkable to think that his entire career from a postdoc to this day has been spent evolving this space and here we are at a moment in time. So why is it that you know it is a moment in time? Well I think there are a couple of things. First of all 
um, our ability to actually construct these drug products and actually from a CMC and manufacturing point of view bring them for, to bring them forward has evolved radically in the last five years. Uh, I think that's always been one of the issues which is you know can you actually make the drug product uh, in a sustainable scalable way mm -hmm. and in a way the way you can secure the, uh, the, s the safety you know the fundamental safety and then, you know there were a few knockbacks in the early phases of, oh, yeah. of development Terrible. yes exactly so so clearly there's been a lot of progress in that space the approval of Glybera, which is based obviously also on the IP estate that came out You're of the You're talking about the first approved gene therapy. Yeah, in Europe. Um, you know, I think it's always useful to have a leading sort of example, um, even if it's a sort of in-market test. Mm -hmm. So, because it starts to give, I think, investors um, and just generally the community a sort of confidence that you can get over the finish line and get a drug out right. there. You're not at the discovery stage. No, and I, you know, it's sort of like the proof point. Right. And so I think that's a set the second uh, thing. The other thing I think is that having a group of organizations, companies going in, so for example, the startups, but not only that, but I mean, a few of the larger companies have had their own programs like mm -hmm. Genzyme and mm -hmm. GSK. Mm -hmm. um, the coming together, I think in and of itself creates a moment in time. So you need almost, um, a number of companies and a number of investors to believe and then I think there is an acceleration mm -hmm. and I think you're seeing that at the moment as well and we always say that you know obviously uh, not everyone's going to be successful but generally all boats should rise with the tide so the more people you have for example in dialogue with, with the agency or in dialogue with the healthcare systems or with the patient groups that I think that creates a sort of an acceleration of interest and potential for innovation. Now your lead program is for hemophilia. Hemophilia B. B. Yes, yes. So what's your target? What's your aim in hemophilia B with this product that you have? So obviously the goal of gene therapy is to offer patients sure. yeah, long-term benefits. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, day one on the job and uh, clearly the aspiration as it was in the many years that I worked in cancer was to aim for the cure. I mean, we have to have a vision. But I do think that if you look at the, the, um, the patient journeys today and the unmet me medical needs here, you know, even the promise of a long-term benefit yeah. would be really so what kind uh, of significant. Of time are you about in terms well, of I think most time. people are sort of talking in the five to ten year period. Right, you know. which would be very substantial compared to what they're doing right now, which is finding therapies that don't need to be given as quite as frequently as oh, they are. Exactly. And so have been. you know, clearly the replacement So this would be a strategy. revolutionary change for patients. Yes, the target product profiles I think that we're all going for in you know gene replacement, right. whether that be in the liver, you know the eye, mm -hmm. in the neuro, you know in the CNS. I think you know really are with the expectation of the two important things. One is a long-term benefit, where the overall clinical utility, the benefit risks, are significantly differentiated from the standards of care now. Mm -hmm. I think we also always, always have to keep in mind that many of these patients are young. So w the reason that also I'm so excited to be moving into this space, why I haven't worked before, is that if you look at a lot of the patients that we are now going to be looking to help, they're in the earliest parts of their lives. And I think it's always very exciting if you can work in a space of biopharma mm -hmm. where you're looking to extend and meaningfully enhance the lives of patients. And that's always got me out of bed So every a number day. of gene therapy companies are out there focused on hemophilia as well. Why, what, what is it about hemophilia that's so attractive right now as it relates to gene therapy? Well, it's always good if you have a lead program from a drug development point of view where clearly uh, the biology is understood uh, at the most basic level where there's also been a whole era of, of companies working on therapies. And so, um, for example, you know, the whole development ecosystem is pretty mature. I mean, there are sites, there's patient groups and advocacy who are very, very familiar with the drug development process. Mm -hmm. So there is a milieu, really on a global basis, mm -hmm. that's been largely developed by many of the companies we're familiar with, like, mm -hmm. you know, Biogen and Baxter. Um, and also tied with that, the regulatory the pathways obviously are going to have to evolve with these therapies, but certainly the endpoints, the things that we measure, you know, the biomarkers, um, are reasonably well defined. Mm -hmm. Having said that, 
having said that, when you bring a gene therapy into the space, you know, mm. it's clearly not the same as delivering a, right. a replacement therapy and strategy. So we are going to have to continue to evolve thinking about that. But, but you know, when you're looking at um, a program which is again going to be at the leading edge of your innovation cycle, it's always good, I think, to choose a disease where people really understand the disease, they understand the unmet need, they understand the standard of care, and that the agencies have seen the disease a lot. They understand the biomarkers, they understand the endpoints, and there is a relatively straightforward regulatory pathway for the current standards of care. So that's why I think it's very attractive. The other thing is that, you know, in haemophilia, there clearly remains a very significant unmet right. need for a significant number of patients. So it is an orphan disease, mm -hmm. but it's not, you know, it's of the orders of tens of thousands of patients. So do you have a pipeline in mind? I mean, you're going to yeah, put Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we have a haemophilia B as our lead. Right. Uh, we've already signed our deal with uh, Bayer on our right. haemophilia A program. Uh -huh. And we have um, uh, some other as yet undisclosed programs, but clearly in the rare diseases space. We truly believe that you know, we need to um, invest and grow our company um, for success. And so we're looking forward to adding to these programs, and we're also looking forward to potentially uh, working with partners uh, moving forward. Great. Well, good luck with that. Thank you very All much. All the John. great wishes for success. Thank you. Keep us posted. Thank you very much.